I had arrived in New Atlantis, the first major city. The mission says I need to go and meet the members of Constellation. Well, they can wait. I'm using my main character privilege to put the main quest on hold while I go shopping. First, I went to one of the many coffee shops. Donuts? Bakery? Citizen? Oh, hell yeah, give me some of that. <coughs> you lied to me, Terror Brew. Worst game, minus five out of seven. Next up is the general goods shop that, that I'm, I'm over here, love. Sells and buys a little bit of everything. And I'm going to be coming here a lot by the looks of things. After purchasing some lumberjack clothes, I made my next stop at The Viewpoint, a bar where in good old RPG fashion, you can hire new crew members and ask the bartender for local rumours. During a conversation with the bartender, I gained my first side quest. Nissa has a new drink she wants to try and make, but her ingredients are currently being detained in customs. She really needs those ingredients and wants some help, and is not so subtly asking for it in her own words. Before we say anything else, I am in no way asking you to do anything that might violate any of the many, many laws in place here in New Atlantis or the larger United Colonies. This is just one friend talking to another friend, asking if maybe that friend could possibly find a way to get her important cargo out of the impound. And if, hypothetically, that were done in a less than 100% legal way, well, that might not be the worst thing in the world. Well, wait a second, how are you going to play by the rules if you don't have the rule but oh. Agreeing to help, Alyssa informs us that the quickest way to get her cargo would be to get a key card. however we would get one. Pickpocketing sounds like the most practical approach, but it wasn't working because you cannot pickpocket unless you have unlocked the skill to do so. So instead, I approached the dark worker in an attempt to charm my way inside. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Maybe he just really hates ginger people. Alright, plan C. Digi picking. Luckily for me, this is but a novice lock. Yet I also discover- Stop! Okay, editing Zach here. Hey everybody. Got a last minute edit here to show you. I was about to go on a rant about how much the lock picking sucks, and to be honest, the game doesn't do a good job of describing to you how it works, so I'm going to do a better job of describing to you how it works. So, as you can see on the screen here, we've got a novice lock, we've got four digipicks, and we've got a total of two rings. Now, our goal is to get these keys to fit in the digipicks. Now, whenever you stick a digipick into the ring, the holes where the keys are will fill in. So I'll just show you here. We've got this key here. I'm about to stick it here next to these two holes. See there how now it's still got the three holes at the top and we would have to stick one of these keys in. Now obviously in this case, I did the example pick and now none of these keys are going to fit. So I'm going to undo. So the best way to do it is get as many keys as you can and line them up with any holes you can see and then look at the inner ring and see what keys can fit in there. So from what I can see, the two holes here, this key is going to fit there, and then where is it? This key is going to fit there on the inner ring. So now all of these keys should be in the right place. All I have to remember to do now is put them in the right order. So I'm going to go put this one in, and then this one, which empties one ring, and then they get filled in, they get filled in, and the lock is picked. And there you go. That's how the lock picking works. Now, obviously, as you get higher difficulties, it's going to be harder to do, but hopefully that's cleared up how lock picking works for you. All right, back to the video. Thanks, guys. After getting lucky with the rings I need, I open the door and pink panther my way inside. My immersion gets a little bit ruined as I am trying to stay stealthy while a clunky robot is following after me. Inside, I discover contraband that can be sold to certain buyers for high prices. I swipe it and a few other goodies, including Nissa's secret ingredients, and then escape with no one the wiser. Yeah, pay no attention to the handsome man and his loud robot emerging from the door that was previously locked behind you. Nothing weird's going on here. On my way back to Nissa, I have what I thought to be a conundrum. There's a security check that I need to pass through and I'm holding contraband. So how am I going to get through this? Well, actually, the solution is very simple. 
By engaging in activities that don't even raise an eyebrow from the citizens, let alone law enforcement, I use my monkey-like climbing skills to climb around the checkpoint and make my way to the very grateful Nyssa. She gives me the first ever sample of her new drink and offers me, temporarily, free drinks. Well, I can't say a no to an offer like that. You bitch, these aren't free! New Atlantis is a city of lies! Vosco and I take the monorail to the Mass District. And this area looks quite underdeveloped in terms of game design. The same low effort tree is randomly copy and pasted with various size changes everywhere you go. Not only that, but looking into the sky of this supposed city, you can actually see the sky and not a lot of buildings. I take a little more time to look around at what services and shops are available and discover the quietest doctor's practice in existence, where you don't even need to make an appointment, you can just walk in, demand aid and get it on the spot, while NPCs are doomed to wait forever. I find another clothes shop and buy some more clothes to increase my persuasion chance by 5%, which also adds to Fireface's already exquisite dapperness. Finally, I make my way to the lodge, the home base of Constellation. Inside, I'm greeted by Sarah, who immediately tickles Fireface's fancy. Sarah is the second in command and is currently the leader whenever this idiot needs to fix his messes. She explains to me that Constellation are a group dedicated to solving the mystery of the vision Barrett and I saw. After a few quips from a grumpy old bastard and a smiley spiritual dude, I add my MacGuffin to the collection and they merge into one bigger but still incomplete Mother MacGuffin. Initiated, or maybe perhaps conscripted into Constellation, Sarah advises me to meet the rest of the team. As this is an RPG, I'm pretty much looking at my options for who am I going to sleep with. First, there's Matteo, a theologist who comes across as respectful and suspects that the MacGuffin has a religious cause to it. Walter Stroud, who is a white, old and rich business owner, which probably means that he's going to be a villain at some point because lazy 2023 writing. He apologises for insulting us when we first arrived and says his role in the team is basically the wallet. Finally, there's Noel, the researcher. I got the impression that she's a little socially awkward but good-natured. She gives me a tour of the lodge and then shows me to my quarters, which has an endless storage safe. Excellent. A place to store all of my fashion options. I make my way back to the living room and read a magazine that somehow teaches me to take less fall damage. Do a flip! And then I speak to Sarah again. Obviously, because I'm the main character and the most trustworthy handsome person in the lodge, Sarah sees it fitting to tell me that she has a lead about another MacGuffin piece, and she insists that she's going to travel with me to go and get it. Well, Fireface is not one to refuse the request of a lady, so they head out to start an adventure, next time on Starfield. <laughs>